Okay, your fire pot is located right in the center in the middle of your firebox. And when you lift it out, you'll notice that there's a, an area here where your igniter comes into the back of the fire pot. And you'll also notice the inside. The inside of the fire pot is where your screen, that's where your fire is going to actually burn. Your pellets are going to actually burn right here in the bottom of the fire pot. So you want to make sure you keep that area clean. <clears throat> One of the things that, you'll, that we'll refer to in the owner's manual is uh, clinkers. Uh, what a clinker is basically is just unburned fuel that's uh, collecting on your uh, screen on the inside of your fire pot. And this holds true for any of the units. So you want to make sure that that stays clean. And one of the ways, or a couple of ways, that you can actually keep that clean is to make sure that you've got enough airflow coming through the fire pot. If your airflow is too slow, it's going to get incomplete combustion and actually build up clinkers on here a lot quicker. If you're using a substandard fuel, uh, substandard fuel will more likely be able to uh, uh, collect a clinker on the bottom of the fire pot. So you want to make sure that that's clear. Uh, if you notice that your stove is uh, having a little difficulty getting started, uh, things of that nature, you may want to shut it down and check your fire pot and make sure that that's all clear of any, uh, any debris. And then down here in the middle, you're going to have your uh, igniter, your igniter bracket where it can be removed and, and maintained when it needs to, your drop chute, and then your fire pot just slides right back into your firebox just like that. Then your ash pan is going to drop back in. And of course, closing your door. The other thing that you'll notice on the front of the stove is you're going to have your air control right here. On a, on a pellet stove, it's very, uh, very important to have good air control. You want to make sure you've got plenty of oxygen to your fire. And this is where you're going to control that is right here with your damper slide. You push it in to cut the air off. You pull it open to open up and get more air to your fire. And depending on what setting you're on, if you're on a low setting, of course, you want a, uh, less air. On a higher setting where you're feeding more fuel, you want to be able to open that up and give it a little more air. Make sure you're getting good combustion, plenty of oxygen to your fire, and getting a good clean burn and a good efficient burn. And that's where you're going to make those adjustments right there on the uh, slide. The other thing that you'll notice is the stove uh, has a combination right now of a nickel door and, and black legs. And so you can, you can combine those in any way you would like. Uh, of course, we have black doors, gold doors, nickel doors. Same with your legs, black, gold, and nickel. And you can mix and match those however you like. You'll have an ash lip in the front so that when you crack your door open, any ash that tends to want to fall off your door is going to fall right on your ash lip and not on the floor. The control board is located on the left-hand side of your stove. This is where you're going to control your fuel feed, your heat settings, um, and uh, actually start and stop your stove right here on your IntelliChoice control board. It's going to have five heat settings. Um, one thing that's nice about the uh, Little Rascal is that it ha does have standard automatic ignition on the stove. So when you start your stove, you're going to actually just, all you're going to need to do is hold your start button down for five seconds and that's going to start it. But one thing you want to do, once your stove is installed, and for the first time that you're going to actually start your stove, or if your stove later on would run out of fuel, the startup procedure is going to be this. You open up your hopper. One thing I like to do is I like to check and make sure that my auger's not jammed and operational because of shipping and those kind of things. So you've got the stove plugged in, and what you're going to do is hold your start button in for five seconds, and then you're going to release it. Okay, that's going to power the uh, control board up. Now, what you want to do is you want to actually prime the auger. The auger system is located in the bottom of your hopper where your fuel is stored and augers the fuel up and then drops it into your fire pot where it's going to burn. So what you want to do is you want to get that auger full of fuel initially. And you'll do this again uh, on the initial startup when you first start your stove after it's installed or later on down the road if you've run out of fuel and run your hopper dry. So what you'll do to put it in the prime mode to get your auger full of fuel is you're going to hold your start button down for 15 seconds and then release it. And then you can look down in your hopper, you can watch your auger, it'll be turning. So now that you know everything's uh, operating there fine, and then you can go ahead and fill the hopper full of fuel. Now that the hopper's full of fuel, the auger's going to pick it up and start to drop it into the fire pot. It'll take oh, maybe a minute or two, and you'll notice that the uh, fuel will start dropping into the fire pot. At that point, your auger's full, so you want to take it out of prime. So what you'll do is you'll hold your start button in for five seconds, release it, and now the control board is reset to, to actually start your stove at this point. It's out of the prime mode. 
auger's shut down, and you're ready to start your stove. In order to start your stove, um, I always like to make sure that my uh, fire pot is empty, make sure it's free of any debris, and you're going to hold the start button in for uh, five seconds, and you're going to release it. Once you release the uh, start button, you're going to notice that you're going to have a uh, red light next to your lightning bolt, which is going to be your uh, igniter. And then about a minute and a half later, it'll start to feed fuel. It'll let your igniter get hot and then start to feed fuel. And then it takes about three to four minutes, depending on the pellet, before you'll see a fire in your fire pot. Once you have a fire in your fire pot, then at that point, you're going to let the stove automatically go through its operation. It's going to warm up. And uh, one thing you'll want to do when you're, when you're actually uh, watching the fire start initially, this is where you're going to want to take your control uh, damper and make sure that you've got the proper amount of air to your fire. What I like to do when I'm first starting it and it's in the startup mode is I like to have my damper all the way shut. Once I start to see a fire, then I open it up about halfway and uh, you'll notice your fire will kind of stand up straight. And then after about eight minutes or so, when you've got a good fire in it, the stove will go through its, uh, its normal checklist internally with its control board. Then after about 10 to 12 minutes, what you'll notice is that the uh, room air blower will come on. Now, if your room air blower doesn't come on within about 15 minutes, the control board will time itself out and you'll just have to start over. So you normally, that's when you want to make sure that your fire pot's clean when you're initially starting your stove. So again, real quick, just to go through the startup procedure, once your stove is, your auger is primed, you got fuel in the hopper, you're gonna hold your start button down for five seconds. You're gonna, about a minute and a half later, the uh, auger will start to feed fuel. And then within about four to five minutes, you're gonna actually have a fire in your fire pot. After about eight to 10 minutes, your room air blower will come on. Once your room air blower comes on, you'll notice that the stove will indicate a, a medium setting on your light indicator on your control board. Let the stove burn for about 30 minutes or so, and then you can actually start making uh, changes in your feed rate and your uh, BTUs, your heat output, on your control board by uh, pushing the red and blue arrows on your control board. Okay, now when you're ready to shut your stove down, all you have to do is push and hold your start button again for five seconds, release it, and the stove will go through its shutdown procedure. It'll stop feeding fuel, and you'll actually see the lights on your uh, feed indicator run from the top down. Top down, it'll just keep doing that. The unit will eventually cool itself down, your fans will shut off, and the unit will completely shut itself down. And you don't have to babysit it while it's doing that. Once you've uh, put it in the shutdown mode, uh, you can leave the stove and it'll go about its uh, business and, and shut itself down.